because we're going to say, I don't like leaning back because it makes my pain go further down or it hurts more, right? Either one of those comments tells you they probably want to be in that flexion bias. If they do, then what you know is there are some finite techniques to use. And so what I'm doing is a little bit um, against kind of my nature uh, and, and what I want for you, but I'm giving you cookbooks uh, uh, sequences to follow, right? Like, do this, if, then, so they're conditional. Um, and number one on the flexion bias, number one is what technique? You guys have seen it before. Drawing in. Drawing in. So we're going deep segmental with this, right? So deep segmental meaning the drawing in technique. Now, again, let's revisit what we know. Drawing in says I'm taking my belly button and I'm pulling it as close to my spine as possible. What muscle am I activating? The transverse abdominis. Now, did anyone, was anyone bold yesterday with Deanna and say, oh, we have an activity for that transverse abdominis that you're talking about. Did anybody identify the drawing in technique for her? No? A little intimidated still. I got you. It's okay. All right, so let's lose some intimidation. Let's all talk about pulling our belly button. That, that, the first way to do this is we're going to start by standing. Uh, here in a minute, Noah's going to get into quadruped and show us how to do it. But let's put that belly button on our spine. Now, as I put my belly button on my spine, I'm able to talk, right? So let's all talk together. Let's do something that we all know, right? And that's just simply speaking the A, B, C, D alphabet, right? So here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No one's helping me out. Elemental B. Q, R, S. We could do a Christmas song. Yeah, yeah, we could do a Christmas song or something fun like that, right? No, we didn't do Joy to the World or any Jingle Bell, nothing. All right, you should be able to speak that out. Now, what that does is two things. Number one, it tells us that they're not holding their breath. Right, and what is that risk? That risk is off salad maneuver and all these bad things. Number two is it tells us that they're able to draw in and maintain that for a very long time, right? These are type one muscle fibers, mostly in the transverse abdominis. They need that endurance. This is a great technique and it's very simple, all right? So we start them with that. Why is that flexion? Because as the transverse abdominis pulls in, what do they naturally do? They naturally flex. Okay? Next on the list, what's number two? Posterior pelvic tilt and add upper extremity and lower extremity. Okay, all right. Come on back over, Noah. Now I'm going to share that I don't like doing posterior pelvic tilt from a supine hook line position, right? But we're going to go ahead and put him in there. Go ahead. Supine hook line, right? You guys are all good? This is hook line, correct? Everybody all good that this is hook line? Yeah? Okay, if hook line is a word you kind of perceive as being something else, erase it and make this hook line. Okay, this is hook line from a supine position. Now, to do these, what we're going to do is, is we're going to have to give him some feedback. Number one is I can give him tactile feedback. That means I'm touching, right? So I can either put my thumbs on the ASIS or I can take and slide my hand underneath that spine. Now, if he's a flexion bias, we're really going to encourage a posterior pelvic tilt because an anterior pelvic tilt is not really flexion, is it, of the spine? What does it do? It's more extension, right? So what we want to understand is this right here is probably going to preset him into a posterior pelvic tilt anyways because as soon as he does this, if he's a flexion bias, he's going to be like, ooh, and he's going to encourage that. So as you're standing there, just real quick, perform a posterior pelvic tilt. Pull that up. Do you feel the rectus and the TAs kind of working together and they're pulling that pelvis up, right? And hold it. Now, as you're able to do that, again, should they be able to talk? Absolutely, right? We're talking about getting them to do a muscle setting technique. All right, 
So, here we go. We're going to pull that up for us, Noah. Oh, I don't see anything happening. You're not very good at this, are you? Okay. We're going to have to work with Noah. All right. So, Dakota, come over here and encourage Noah the right way. Give him some feedback here. Now, what did he have to do to get his hips up? What's that technique called? Bridge, right? So we have to bridge up and then drop back down. Bridging is probably something we're going to see here in just a few minutes in the extension bias. Right? Okay, so let's look. Everybody look at Noah. Relax and repeat. Now, did you see his hips come up? I don't want his hips to come up. I want his pelvis to come up, all right? This is not a curl up either. The shoulders should stay real quiet. The neck should stay real quiet. Everything's laying down. Let's see again. Ooh, I don't see it. You guys see it? Yeah, I did last time, not there. Yeah, I see it. You got to condense it. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, is he getting it? He's getting it. Sure? Yeah. Yeah. A little less than that. You guys seeing it? No. Dakari, are you seeing it? <laughs> so we know the posterior pelvic tilt, right? I should be able to, whoop, right there. Okay? Now, when we teach that, it's very important to actually get that happening. Okay? And that's what I'm going to look for uh, for you here in just a moment. What's number three? Single knee to chest and double knee to chest. Single knee to chest and double knee to chest. Now this is probably like when you when you consider uh, all of the flexion activities, these are the two most mainstream right here, right? So here's your single knee to chest. It's a stretching technique. It is. Now later I'll talk to you about it and I'll say probably going to do these even if they have an extension bias. And I'm going to teach you where in the sequence, because it's really critical that you do these and then you follow them with some type of extension if they have an extension bias. But look, it still stretches the involved muscles. Think quadri or, uh, quadratus femoral, think erector spinae, think glute max, right? Think the proximal aspect of the hamstrings. All of these matter. And I actually prefer a sequence, and I'll show you here in a minute the way I do these. So I do a single knee to chest. And then I bring in the double knee to chest kind of later. A lot of times they have one side where they're really defined and they're saying, it's my right side that hurts. So we stretch that right side and we really leave that left side out because we want to just kind of mobilize on that left side. But the double knee to chest is really good, except for I find that a lot of people hold their breath when they do it, right? And so make sure you're not holding your breath. Talking is a great way to avoid breath holding, right? So again, it's there. Quiet that neck down for me. That's another big thing is get their necks to relax. You don't want to add another spinal issue by letting them hold their neck up and they can over sequence these muscles right here, especially that sternocleidomastoid. So we leave that back down. All right, so coming back down, right? What's next on our list? Piriformis stretch. stretch, all right? So a lot of times what I like to do is take them here. Oh, sorry. Go into a, dump, a single knee uh, chest stretch and then have them come up to the next sequence of a hamstring stretch. And I know many of us are looking at that and they're saying, well, I didn't, I didn't think really that that was probably a hamstring stretch. His knee's a little bent. We're going to give just a little bit here, okay? We're going to give. And then from there, what I'll do is then I'll fold into a figure four, right? And then that's where we reach down and we grab here. And what did I do? I stretched all of that right side in kind of one sequence, right? So single knee to chest, falling into hamstring, falling into piriformis. All very simple. And again, just encourage, keep that head quiet, keep that head quiet, right? So we fell into those other two. Next on the list, give it to me, Jakari. Uh, cat cow. All right, so for that, we gotta go into quadruped. Now, I call it cat cow um, because we live in LaFleur County. We don't have any camels. But you may have seen it referred to as cat camel, and that's okay if you have. And if you refer to it that way, it's totally cool. Uh, but one thing about the quadruped or tabletop position is 
to know that they need 90 here at the hips, they need 90 here. So it should look a really good square, right? And teaching a cat cow for a flexion bias, you're going to want to encourage those posterior pelvic tilts, right? And that's the hollowing out of the body, at least on the front side. When they hollow out, you can give them tons of different feedback to, to do this. But what we know is that the cat cow should be a total spinal movement. Let me say that again. It should be a total spinal movement, meaning this whole thing right here, it should fall into all flexion, right? So that is the cervical, thoracic, uh, lumbar, and sacrum. All of that should fall into a flexion. And so by doing that, we're going to say we're going to hollow out. So we're going to pull this up. And many times, this is what I'll do, is I'll put my hand here and I'll lift, right? Now, that can get a little bit nerve-wracking for some people because they don't know what you're about to do, right? So you just tell them, I'm just giving you just a little bit to kind of teach you what we're doing here. But we're going to lift this up, and then we're going to tuck that head down. Now, do you see the whole flexion, right? That's where the cat camel is a flexion bias. If they don't like extension, they're not going to go out of cat and in the cow. They're just not. In fact, what they're going to do is when they come back, they're going to stop at about the, the optimal position. However, what we're doing is we're going as close to zero or past it as we can, and we're encouraging that movement, which later on we'll understand is very important to getting back to normal, but then repeating that process. Again, I'm not going to tell you that there's a rep number that's perfect for this. I told you that through Therex 1. I have no idea. Reps are arbitrary. Do 1 million. Go. Right? Again, look at this, though. You're getting light mobilization in the whole spine, and it's moving. Motion is lotion. We need to get them moving, and then they'll feel better. It activates subtly these movements right here. Right? And so that's good as well. Good. What's next? Curl. Alright, so flip over back into hook line. I would organize this as closely as I could to keep everything that was supine hook line in one and then you know move into the next sequence. So for a curl up, it's very important that they not try to do a setup. We'll talk about osteoporosis later today. Osteoporosis has a very, very unique subset of patients and we tell them not to do one thing and what is that? Yeah, it just avoid some trunk flexion. So if we're going to avoid trunk flexion, we can still do a curl up, we just don't do a sit up, right? And so what I will do is I'll have them put their hands just down to the sides. I'll say, make sure you keep a strong, stable neck, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use these muscles right here, and we're going to lift our shoulders and our head as one, and we're going to slide our hands down while we do it. So we just come up, good, and back down, right? The head and the shoulders have to stay as one. But this prevents a big moment like that, right? And so look over at Bony Tony in the corner, and you think about the anterior pillar. That's a word we started in Therex 1. That's the vertebral body. And as it comes forward, those vertebral bodies compress each other. And if there is a osteoporotic dysfunction, they could cause a compression fracture. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So we teach them this way right here. But also, just in this, come up again. We're activating the rectus abdominis, right? Which is key in helping to reduce pain that could be occurring here. So let me go back one more step. People say, well, how does strengthening here, or just activation here, help to reduce pain here? A lot of times this is caught up in spasm. And remember what spasm is. That's that over-sequencing of a muscle spindle is really kind of the, the basic way of understanding spasm. And what are you doing? You're reciprocating inhibition right here. When you activate this, it shuts down the muscle spindle activity here. And so this is a very potent exercise right here. All right, so one more time. 
Good. Okay. How many? One million. Don't know. What's next? Uh, All right. So the plank. So a lot of times you look at the plank. Um, go ahead. I'm, I'm certain you can plank for hours. All right. This is a tall plank, right? And what it's doing is it's engaging the anterior muscles specifically, the quads, the hip flexors, the rectus, right? And so this is definitely like flexion uh, bias. This is a tall plank, which is the hardest version of plank. Let's go down to a, I'm sorry, I said that was the hardest. That's not the hardest. This is the hardest version of plank right here, which is the um, low plank, right? Now, this is a great exercise just in general, but we can do this with some of our patients. Now, some patients can't do this, right? If they can't go into quadruped, they certainly can't go into this. And that, and I'm talking from strength, right? So you have to have a modification. Everything should have modifications applied to it. So we do. Come on over. Actually, you can stay right there. We'll pretend you came over. And you can go into a position like this. What's this position known as? Planty grade, correct, good job. Planty grade, and that's where the word plank comes from, is from planty grade. So we definitely have reiterated what hook line is, and now we have reiterated what planty grade is. So here's planty grade, right? So here, down to here, right? And again, they're just activating here isometrically. So you go for time, 30 seconds, one minute, whatever, which is teaching how to do a plank. Any more? Okay, so jump into your pods there. 